I wonder if we're on here. Can't really tell. Hey Tracy, how are you? Sandy, welcome today. Diane, good morning. It's fun for me to be here. Layla, welcome. Sandy, good to see you all. Emily, hello. Maria, wow, this is fun. Honey, my wife Marilyn, hello. I'm so happy to be doing this today. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Janice, how are you? Judy? Yeah, good morning. It is a good morning. It's kind of foggy out there. Um, just had a bird fly into our window, so it's not that foggy, so I'm not sure how that happened. But um, Rusty, how are you? Good morning, Maria. Yeah, good to see you guys. Well, Hi, Deb. Yeah, looking forward to this. So, um, you know, I've, I'm going to ask you two questions while we wait for more people to, to come into the room. I've been thinking of these myself throughout the past several weeks, trying to kind of unfocus on what's going on and try to think of some, uh, you know, some things about where, where I am uh, inside related to it. Hi, Christy. Um, so, you know, life has changed so radically for all of us over the past several weeks, and I'd be very interested, you guys just giving me some feedback here, and I've asked myself this question, what do you miss about life pre-pandemic? What do you miss about life before all this happened? I think one of the things I miss a lot is uh, hugs, uh, greeting people with hugs. Um, handshakes, not so much, but I like the hugs. Um, I, I miss um, having a meal without worrying about doing dishes afterwards. Remember, remember uh, restaurants? I miss that. Yeah, hugs, a lot of hugs there. I miss um, touching my face. You know, I'm always like, don't do it, you know. But um, anybody else, can you think of what you, you miss about life before all this happened? Yeah, I think hugs is a big one. So we're going to be standing in line for hugs when we finally get back to our meeting on Sunday together at the building. So, um, and the other question is, um, it might be a little bit more difficult to think about is, what do you like about this quarantine? Like, can you find anything in this quarantine that you can say, well, I, I kind of like this. Um, for instance, I like still being able to go to church even though it's online. I mean, I love that. Most people uh, are doing this online church, but I love the fact that we're doing it. And the people that are putting all this together technically and uh, doing the, the worship and the, the talks and the small groups, the small group leaders and uh, these devotions, everybody's doing such a, a, a great job. I'm actually a little intimidated today uh, doing this because everybody else who does it is young and good looking. So I'm, I've been a little bit intimidated, but uh, we'll see what, how it goes today. But um, yeah, time to get things done. Positive, saving money on gas. Connected with friends from college and uh, yeah, spending time with the family. That's a good one, Christy. Well, thanks for dropping in. Um, Saturday morning, uh, I thought people might be sleeping in because it's the weekend until I realized that we don't have weekends anymore. The whole week is like one day. You lose track. There's no Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It's just all one day. Uh, don't your, doesn't your week feel like that? You, ever, you, know, you just lose track of where we are. But I'm glad you're here and uh, let's pray. I'm going to open up with some prayer today. So Father... Um, we thank you so much for your love for us, and we invite your presence here today. Lord, would you release your spirit um, in each one of us today to uh, draw something out of your word and, and just being together in this experience, Lord. We thank you for a new day, and we just dedicate this day to you and, and 
ask that you would just show us today something more of who you are and what you've done for us and how to be kind to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so I thought I'd share a few things about, um, you know, how Marilyn and I are doing, uh, how we're doing through this, just kind of catch you up. Uh, being retired, there's not a lot different. Uh, there's not a lot that has changed around our home, uh, except that virus thing outside. Um, we're kind of doing the same things we were doing beforehand, but just maybe more of them and maybe a few different things. I'm painting. I, uh, I really, painting really helps me just to focus on something else, and I just love it. I just finished uh, two paintings were commissioned by Jeremy and Tracy, and I love doing those, and I love, I just dropped those off this week. And uh, Marilyn is making masks. I think she's made up to 350 masks, and, um, you know, that's, that's, she's just, I, I think that's awesome. She's just doing such a great job and giving those masks to some of you, uh, working in uh, care facilities, and uh, she takes some over to the uh, nursing home where her aunt is and uh, gets them out to, to nurses. And so that's what we're doing, um, spending our time together. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I'm doing inside too, um, which is different about than what we're doing. It's, it's how I'm doing inside. You know, how's my soul? And I just want to share that like everybody else, I have... Um, fear going on. There are times when if I think about things too much, I feel a little bit depressed. Um, I have moments where I have these micro freakouts, you know, I, so, I, I see something on the news or something happens around the house and there's this pent up tension that's there and I just have this micro freak out. Um, you know, for instance, you can only hear so many times, you know, the highest risk people are those 65 and older and who have underlying conditions. You hear that the 500th time and it freaks you out. It's like, you know, okay, I get it. So that's one of, I, I'm hoping that the fact that I don't have many gray hairs will kind of lower my risk a little bit. But the statistics worry me. Um, I think for me, more practically is uh, the thing I worry about most is doing something as simple as going to the grocery store. I really have to work through worry when I go out because we're, we're pent up, we're holed up here at our home. We don't go anywhere except to shop for groceries. It's scary being out there with people these days. I mean, you go to the store and everybody's kind of walking around with a mask on and it makes everybody kind of look the same. And that's kind of weird. And there's all these weird rules. You have to social distance. You've got to keep six feet between people when you go there. And, uh, you know, it's, they have one-way aisles, which I guess is good to help you do that. Uh, recently, uh, we went to the giant store, and uh, we get to go with the senior hours, 6 a.m. to 7. And uh, we're wearing our mask and, uh, you know, walking the cart down the aisle. And I would look when I get to the end of the aisle, right and left to make sure nobody was coming at the end of the aisle is, was going to come close to me. And they finally put arrows down on the floor, which is a good thing. And, and I was standing in front of one of the arrows and the arrows was pointing toward me. And I was waiting for Marilyn to come down the aisle. I was just standing there. And this employee guy, who was evidently uh, enlisted to police the uh, cart traffic going down the aisles, he just kind of walks up to me, two feet close, he looks at me, he points at the arrow, and he goes, and I said, I'm just standing here waiting for my wife, and you're too close to me. And now I said that with a smile, but he didn't see it because I had a mask on. But, you know, I fight worry. Uh, I'm a worrier. It, it's part of the way I was made. I mean, I was born and a doctor said to my mom, he looks worried. Um, Marilyn's of Norwegian stock. She's got Viking blood in her. You know, Vikings don't worry about anything. Uh, I've got Italian in me. I worry about the pasta, you know, a dente. Don't cook the pasta too long. But I think most of us worry. 
uh, about life these days. There, we, we have anxiety, uh, we have a, a degree of fear, and we really need to manage that worry in our life or we're going to wind up with a hypertension. You worry too much and you start feeling this depression, uh, a sadness builds up, and of course the anxiety. Jesus has something to say to us about worry. And if you have your device or uh, your Bible nearby, turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. This is, um, of course, the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus has been uh, talking to his followers, his disciples, and many, many others about um, many important things related to life in the kingdom of God. And in chapter 6, uh, this, this verse here is going to be kind of our focus verse with, with another one I'll get to in a minute. But in chapter 6, verse 34, Jesus says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So Jesus says, don't worry. And thank you all for coming. Uh, thanks for tuning in, tuning in. That's the, uh, the point for today. No, no, don't go anywhere. Jesus says, don't worry. Let's read it again. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, I like here how Jesus confirms that there will be trouble in our lives. Each day will have trouble of its own. Uh, you agree with Jesus? You believe and think that there's going to be trouble in our lives? I mean, if you agree with that, just throw up a thumbs up or something so I know you're listening. Throw me a thumbs up if you agree that there's going to be trouble in life. If you really agree, give me a heart. Somebody. Is anybody awake? Thank you. Jesus says... Don't, okay, maybe there's a delay here. There you go, there's a lot of worriers out there. <laughs> no, we just, we're agreeing that there's trouble. Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow's trouble. But you know what? That is easier to say, but harder to do. And as I said, I am fighting worry in this season. I worry about tomorrow. I worry about will things ever be? be normal again. I mean, we're all talking about the new normal. No thanks. The old normal, I was satisfied with that. I don't want the new normal. Now, that, that word worry means an, an anxiousness about the future. Don't have an anxiousness about the future. The future of, you know, will I be okay? Will God take care of my needs? Jesus says, don't worry. I mean, how do you do that when trouble is all around? I mean, how do you not worry, especially since Jesus says each day has trouble of its own? And these days are, are weak as one big day, so the whole week's going to have trouble. How do you not worry? Don't worry. It's kind of like saying, don't hunger. Uh, but I haven't eaten. Don't hunger. It's hard to do. Well, in the preceding verse, I, I think there's a secret that Jesus tells us about how to manage worry in our lives. Verse 33. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And then he goes into the, the verse we just read. Therefore, do not worry. Now, all these things contextually here, he's telling everyone, God will meet your needs. God cares about you. He says specifically, don't worry about your life, what you're going to eat or drink, and, and don't worry about your body, what you will wear. But how many know God cares more about things in our lives than food and clothes? God cares about our sense of feeling, you know, safe 
It's hard to feel safe these days. God cares about our health. That's a big one. He cares about our physical health, health and our emotions and our spiritual health. And those all, all those, those three things intermingle. We, we, we get emotionally down. It affects our physical, and the physical is going to affect the spiritual. And, but Jesus says, seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. So he's saying, don't worry, seek. Don't worry, seek. Here's another uh, translation that kind of puts this together. It says, but more than anything else, put God's work first and do what he wants. Then the other things will be yours as well. And I think Jesus is saying, if I seek first his kingdom and righteousness, somehow, some way, through the presence and power of the Spirit, that's going to help me to get on top of worry. If I seek these things first, worry is going to take a secondary or a third place in my life. Now, I want to suggest to you what seeking first his kingdom and righteousness means. Seek first his kingdom. Think of this. Seek first what he wants to do through you out towards others. See, Jesus' kingdom is his rule and reign. He rules and reigns with authority and power. And in scripture, it tells us he gave authority to his disciples. Why did he give them that authority? So that Jesus could further his kingdom through them, so that they could, in his power and in his authority, serve people and, and heal people and help people. So seek first his kingdom. Seek first what he wants to do through you. And then seek first his righteousness. When you think about that, think about seeking first what he wants to do in you, in your soul. That word righteousness was a scary word to me because I felt like I never had any. I didn't have much righteousness in my life. And then I discovered through scripture that Jesus made me righteous the day he came into my life. And that when God looks at me, he sees the righteousness of Christ through what Christ accomplished on the cross. And now he is working that righteousness, God's rightness through my life and into my life. So seek first what he wants to do in you, in your soul. How's your soul? The secret of over overcoming worry is being intentional about seeking what God wants to do through you and what God wants to do in you. That translation in the message puts it all this way. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now through you and in you and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. I love that. I believe all of us, every one of us, wants to get out of this trouble we are presently in. We want this pandemic to be over. We want this virus to leave. I mean, life is, just feels eerie. It feels weird these days. I mean, I take walks with Marilyn, and we haven't done that for a little while because it's been kind of chilly. But we take walks, and we live here, and we have Upper Marion High School down the road and, and the uh, Upper Marion Middle School, and there's usually lots of cars and kids and, and people walking around and a lot of traffic. There's nothing we go out to walk and there's no cars driving around. There's not many people. It's like a ghost town out there. I envision tumbleweeds rolling by. And in, in, and in my soul as I'm walking, it's, God, I want this to be over. Andy Stanley said this. Deliverance in the desert comes through dependence on God. We want to get out of the desert 
God wants us to get something out of the desert. God wants us to get something out of this that we're going through. So my encouragement to you, and maybe an action point for all of us, is keep seeking first his kingdom. And many of you guys are doing that. Some of you are doing it and we're not aware. But, you know, people are getting together and they're buying groceries and they're bagging them up and they're delivering to people. And we got two, two bags of groceries. It was awesome. And, and we, we gave one to our daughter. Your, your people are making masks. Um, people are, I see people texting on Facebook, hey, I'm going to Costco. Does anybody need anything? You know, Costco ministry. It's great. That's, that's seeking God's kingdom, seeking what God can do through you. And seek first his righteousness. As we go through this together, let's let God take care of our soul by giving our entire intention to what he is doing in us. Now, I've found recently, uh, and I've had to do this a lot, that I can seek first what he's doing in me and take care of my soul when I'm having these, like particularly these micro meltdowns where, you know, the tensions build up and, and the frustration and the fear and the worry and maybe I act, I say something to Marilyn and it's not very kind or something happens as stupid as a cat running by me or running through my, my legs and almost tripping me up and I just get, and I just say, you know, I've, I've got to pause. The one of the ways you can, you know, seek first what he's doing in you is, is pause. Pause for a moment. Take a little rest. And what I've been practicing is when I feel that worry or that fear or that anxiety, when I feel those micro freaked out times, I practice just breathing. And I take a little bit of time and I breathe. And when I breathe in, I just say in my heart, come Holy Spirit. And I breathe out and say, Lord, would you take my anxiety? I breathe in, come Holy Spirit. And I breathe out, Lord, take my fear and my worry. So, so try doing some of that today. When you feel fearful or you're worrying or you're feeling anxious, when you have your micro freak outs, Breathe in God's spirit and then breathe out and give him your worry, your fear, your anxiety. It's all an operative of the Holy Spirit. We can't do this as kind of like a, a practice without God's participation. Allow him to take care of your soul. Invite him in to do that. And I like what the, the Apostle Paul says in Romans about the kingdom of God. He says the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let me pray for you guys and me. Lord, we thank you for the truth that we find in your word. Your word is bread. Your word feeds our souls. Your word convicts and your word empowers. And your word gives us your point of view and your heart in this time today on how to manage our worry. Holy Spirit, would you empower us to seek first what you want to do through us, your kingdom, and to seek first what you want to do in us, in our soul. 
and deposit Christ's rightness in us. And we ask this today in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you guys for coming out. I've really enjoyed this time with you. And, and have a great day. God bless you. Uh, give somebody you're quarantined with a hug. Bye-bye. <laughs>